Welcome to our lecture online. Another one of the major types of active galaxies is what we call radio galaxies. Now, when we started with radio astronomy back in the 1960s, we began to see very strong radio sources coming from certain galaxies. Well, at first we just knew direction, but after a while, when we started comparing the direction where the radio generation came from, and then we compared it up with the visible telescopes, we began to zero in and realizing that some of this radiation was coming from galaxies far away. So here we have a couple of galaxies, for example, we have Centaurus A, which is an enormously large galaxy with a huge dust lane going through the middle. And of course, in visible light, we would only see this portion right here. But when we took a radio telescope and pointed in the same direction, we started seeing enormous amount of radiation coming from the two ends perpendicular through the galaxy and those were then called radio lobes because an enormous amount of radio radiation was coming from those radio lobes. Typically radio radiation is very minuscule coming from a, a normal galaxy. And then when we looked at Cygnus A we had a similar uh, result. We saw the galaxy at the very center and then we saw these two radio lobes far away from the galaxy with streams of particles emanating from the center of that galaxy. Now notice the small size of the galaxy compared to the size of the radio lobes. And the radio lobes were like a million light years apart, putting out enormous quantities of radio radiation. So the question is, what produces those radio lobes? And secondly, why is there so much radiation coming from those lobes in the radio radiation bands? Well, it turns out again, the, the culprit at the center of these galaxies is a massive black hole. But in this case, it's a very active black hole with material falling into the black hole. And when the material falls into a black hole, as it's approaching the black hole before it gets to the event horizon, of course, once it's inside the event horizon, it's, nothing is coming out. But before it gets to the event horizon, there's so much acceleration taking place that enormously powerful electromagnetic radiation is produced and along those very strong magnetic field lines particles being shot out in both directions away from that central massive black hole estimated to be about 40% of all the matter that falls towards the black hole so roughly 60% falls in about 40% get shot out along these streams of particles near the speed of light and eventually as they get farther and farther away from the from the activity of the black hole and farther away from the galaxy the galaxy of course pulls on them gravitationally they slow down and you begin to get this whirling mass of particles and the whirling mass of particles is what causes the radiation at that point the radiation no longer is the high energy radiation but at this point you get enormous amount of energy in the radio uh, frequency bands what we also find sometimes is not only is that happening, we also get very energetic energy coming from the very center of that, uh, of that galaxy. And again, that's where the big supermassive black hole is. And sometimes we also get strong radio radiation from the activity that's going on right inside that central region that's typically only a few light years across. So, but what's unusual about these is that we have these huge radio lobes on both ends, sometimes as much as 5 to 10 times the diameter of the Milky Way. In this case, it's at least 10 times the diameter of the Milky Way apart. So these are huge structures far away from the uh, regions of the galaxy itself. And it takes that long for the particles to slow down and begin to form these radio lobes where radio radiation is being emitted by that whirling mass of, um, of uh, material. The best way that I can relate to it as far as visually is when you have a cigarette. Of course, smoking is not a healthy thing, but remember seeing people smoking and you smoke and you put the cigarette on the ashtray, you see that thin stream of smoke coming from the, um, from the cigarette and eventually as it slows down because the interaction with the air particles, it begins to move around and, and then it kind of spreads out. And it's kind of a similar in structure. You have this fast moving particles like from the cigarette is the heat that makes it move away from the cigarette but eventually it's far enough away and it cools down in the interaction of the atmosphere you see things kind of getting blurred the same kind of thing happens except here it's through gravitational forces that slows down the particle and then eventually through the interaction with the interstellar matter it begins to disperse and that's when you end up with these radio lobes so I don't know if that visual makes, uh, makes any sense or helps you understand it but that's indeed what's happening with these very active active galaxies and that is how it's how we uh, find the uh, 
Let me try it again. And this is what we realize now is the source of these enormous radio radiation sources. And that is how it's done. And the picture had nothing to do with it. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't kind of pick up a picture. Let's see, maybe I can find some nice pictures of these radio lobes. So let me see if we have anything that looks like that in this book. Uh, nope, nope. Is there, I don't think I saw any. That's why I wasn't looking for them. I don't think I saw any particular uh, pictures that show that relationship, unfortunately. Nothing in this book.